Okay, I'm going to get a view of uh, the bike trail now here. So you can kind of see what everything looks like. I'm hoping there's not too much wind. what you think about this as far as uh, the ride my commentary on things because it really helps me to improve that and I'm trying to get my subscribe button put up there so you can subscribe to my channel if you like please hit my like button at the bottom and again any additional comments uh, would be appreciated good or bad it doesn't matter that's how we improve your life is getting better at some of the mistakes. So, uh, I'm just going to ride along here a little bit. I'm probably almost six miles into the ride now, and I'm going to maybe go the full 30 today. Like I said, it takes about an hour to get up there, so it's not too bad. It doesn't really feel that cold out here to me because I'm dressed with layers and hats and provocas and all kinds of good stuff. So if you're dressed for this occasion, you're not going to get cold. And uh, some people get colder a little bit easier. I get that. But for the most part, uh, you can dress for anything. I'm actually down to about 89% now on my battery. Um, still using about 52 volts, which is good. Typically um, on this type of battery, when it's fully charged, there's about 55.5 uh, volts. And then when it's getting pretty low to dead, it'll go down to about 39, 38%, and the battery is pretty much fit. And you really don't want to ride till your battery goes down to zero because it's not real good on it. Um, the typical rule of thumb is if you're, not, if you're going to store your battery, you want to store it at about 20% uh, to 80% capacity because you don't want a full charge or a dead charge. So you want to kind of keep it somewhere in the middle. So that is... Uh, is something that I've done a lot of YouTube research which on e-bikes you can do that there's so much out there now with uh, building uh, people's own e-bikes you can do you can do uh, build your own if you've got a bike frame and a bike and or the motor and a hub and you can do that so it's a uh, it's something that I'm gonna probably try to tackle here for too long I got a mountain bike I'd like to convert to an e-bike not sure I'm, I'm ready for that yet, but uh, it's something that a lot of people do. Now, in Ohio, and this is pretty much the uh, standard rule throughout the country, from what I understand, that uh, this bike has a 48 volt. 14.4 amp hour battery on it so it's really considered a uh, class one bike which as long as you can't go over 20 miles an hour on a bike it's legal you don't have to have insurance for it you don't have to have uh, registration or license plates for it and you're really helping the environment because 
can go shopping with it. I've got a basket on the front of this bike, and I've got racks on the back that I can take my storage bag off and put a little crate on there and carry groceries back and forth. Like I said, I did uh, install a remote alarm on here. If you just shake this bike once I'm off of it, it's going to go off. Is it going to stop somebody from stealing it? Probably not. But I don't, I don't walk away very far without my bike. And uh, I've got several locks on the front of my basket. You may have seen them earlier. That I, uh, I can use when if I have to go somewhere and lock it down, I can do that. It's going to make theft a whole lot harder. Impossible? No. I've seen guys on some of these videos have portable grinders. Where they just grind stuff off. Like locks and rope locks and things of that nature. But you know, on the, as the norm, most people leave things alone. But when you're going to invest in an e-bike or something like this, you just got to uh, keep it as secure as you can. So, there's so many good things on this trail that I, I get a look at. I mean, right now, of course, all the leaves are off the trees. You gotta, you gotta really go some really nice landmarks. I just passed a landmark um, about a half a mile back that's called a 911 memorial here in uh, Beaver Creek, Ohio. And the memorial itself is probably a, a piece of steel that's probably 20 feet long that came out of I think the North Tower, but I'm not sure on that. That it's really humbling to see that. To see what the the catastrophic damage that those planes did to those towers to where it just melted and completely twisted this iron. So that's that's part of the ride here. And not too much farther up here, I'm going to come across a, um, of course I've passed some ball diamonds up here for too long. And then there's a, um, kind of like an old, um, I don't know what you want to call it, grain feed elevator you may want to call it. That it's kind of sits right on the corner, it's kind of a little historical marker here. How you doing? How are you? Good. And uh, as you can see, there's a walker there with his dog. And I see a lot of that out here. But for the most part, the, the trails are kept very nice. Um, our park levees here are second to none that I know of in the country. They pave these when they need them. They mark lines where the asphalt's coming up a little bit with a tree limb or a tree root going around it or through it. So they mark those. And uh, they, got, they got mile markers on the asphalt itself, how far you're from your destination. And uh, it's kind of cool. But you always see them out here working, keeping off uh, dead limbs off the trail and leaves. They got a great big blower that comes down through here in the fall and gets rid of all that. And then uh, there's like a water sanctuary to my right here. That it, uh, it's kind of like a bog. And they got some uh, running trails through there, probably about a mile long. So I think that's pretty cool for joggers to get onto with their dogs. And you get exercise, of course. And then. Uh, the trail itself, I mean, it's asphalt the whole way. I only have to ride about four tenths of a mile from my house to get on one small road that I need to go down to get to the bike trail. And from there, I go 28 miles up and back. So, from a safety standpoint, I would rather ride the bike trails than I would the road. The road itself is just, to me, not safe. Cars don't respect motorcycles. And trust me, I think they respect uh, 
Mike's even less. And, uh, yeah, and part of my safety gear is I wear a vest that you buy like Walmart or one of them. It's a yellow vest that is highly bright. It's green. And I want to be noticeable, even when I'm on a trail. Because you can see me from quite a distance, I'm sure. And of course, my helmet, I have uh, lights on the back and the front of the helmet that flash. So it gives people, uh, gives people notice that you're coming or that you're, you're taking safety precautions. So uh, I think I'm gonna probably end my video here. Um, right now I'm um, about 15, 15 miles an hour and I've gone almost six miles, well almost seven miles now. So. I just wanted to do kind of 15, 20 minute video of what the trail looks like, a little bit about myself. It, uh, it's something that uh, you should definitely should look into that if you're interested in e-bike. Go on YouTube, look at all the videos, there's several. And it just shows people doing their thing. So, this is Dan with E-Bike Nation, and we're out.